policies are technology CEOs looking at in the United States coming out of the Trump administration? What has happened so far that they like? What are they expecting from the, from this administration that they're willing to step up and create jobs? Well, it's just jobs? not tech company CEOs. I think... Uh, but, but talk about technology. Sure. Well, the discussion in the boardroom has changed. So instead of, I have to follow all these 40 years worth of rules that have built up and that makes me an ethical company, to what makes me an ethical company today? Uh, what does it mean to be based in the U.S. and be patriotic? It's, now it means creation of jobs, value, great things for consumers. So the, the deal is, which is Trump is exercising, is we're going to get rid of all these detritus of rules which are stymieing corporate America. We're going to lower the corporate tax rate. But in turn, focus on America, get hire the workers. And also, we're saying also to government and public and industry, let's train for the jobs of the future. Let's change our educational system. We have to hit on all fours if we're going to be the country of the future leading the world in innovation. Right, and it, it's also, it's policy dictated by the company, dictated at the individual level rather than by the government. If you want, if you depend, a CEO can decide how green should this company be versus the government making that decision. Decision for them. It's a very, it's a different change. It's, it's called personal responsibility. You're absolutely and corporate right. responsibility. We're going in that direction. So literally today, there's millions of jobs that are open that they're not skilled Americans that can fill them. New jobs are creating which require skills. Plus, demographically, we're changing. We're getting older, living longer, and people are not around to take care of us, especially with restrictions on immigration. So we're, there's going to be a lot of new jobs in the future. But the question is whether we'll have Americans that right. are trained for them. Hmm. It's also called the creative destruction, right? This is industrial. Revolution 2, but are on steroids. I mean, we're seeing a massive displacement of workers by robots, automation, and it's having impacts structurally on inflation, on unemployment, mm -hmm. on where fed, fed, fed funds is going to land. What do you think with regard to um, the capacity to get these new skill sets, to service the robots, to produce and replace the displacement of workers that we're seeing not only in Deutsche Bank, but robo-advisors, uh, low-skilled, medium-skilled uh, Yeah, it's workers. happening in financial services. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, we're, we're going to have to change our educational system. The right. White House has some great proposals. They're talking about apprenticeships programs. But look, we have literally hundreds of thousands of jobs open for data analysts today, mm -hmm. for software writers and others. And the choice that companies face is, wow, we need to create them ourselves here, right. or we have to go to Canada, or we have to go overseas, where they're letting immigrants come in. So we have to look at highly skilled immigration, mm -hmm. getting the people here mm -hmm. we want. We do have to have trade agreements. We can't isolate ourselves or we're going to mm -hmm. fail to thrive as a country and we re we require trade and that's obviously where the um, tech industry is most concerned about where the administration could be going one thing I will add is a lot of these uh, universities these colleges they're more concerned with educating and creating social justice warriors mm -hmm. and focused on these social issues rather than educating young women okay. to be scientists and mathematicians and computer scientists mm -hmm. and I think you will see some of these colleges go out of business if they don't get with the program. Mm. Well, that's some are doing a great job, but some are just, fall, I know or firsthand, they're falling on their uh, falling yeah. on their faces. Well, yeah. That's why, you know, foreign students are such a huge source of revenue right. for those colleges, sure. because virtually any foreign student pays full tuition, and virtually no American student, or a very, you know, a much smaller minority do. Uh, okay, so that's full, full yeah. tuition. So yeah. it's just a huge money raiser, and so that's why they're reluctant to uh, have any... Well, 70% of the STEM graduates are not U.S. citizens, and the way I was on the board of George Mason University, a public university, and the way that works is, ironically, you charge the out-of-state student the same you charge a foreign student. But the challenge we face is we got to keep those STEM graduates. Yeah. We can't kick them out of the country. And we're paying several billion dollars a year in National Science Foundation money to educate them in the latest, greatest stuff. We shouldn't be kicking them out. It's and a that's, a, that's a bipartisan thing. But, we just have to get it, get it through Congress. But surely the answer is Americans should be yeah. educated at that 70% STEM level, not foreigners, right? I, mean, uh, that's I the, disagree with that. American, we want the best and the brightest from the world. That is how we have thrived as a country. But we we're not educating our smartest. kids to thrive yeah, in this I We have, want to get them in there, but we, we are the beacon for the best in the world. And those immigrants are creating disproportionately some of our biggest companies. But I have, That's what we need. I have firsthand experience with a family member who is a perfect STEM student, somebody who could be a technology leader, and she happens to be at a school that doesn't want to hear about it, but they want to educate her on social
social issues. That goes back to education. They're like, we're right. educating and our I, kids I'm saying wrong. That, that the schools that do a good job mm -hmm. and do a great job at finding those students and educating them no. in science and mathematics, they will succeed. These call these liberal arts colleges, they are a thing of the past, yeah. and that's happening very quickly. And it's Absolutely. expensive, even even with the shortfalls in even, terms of even what with, they're teaching. Yeah, well, even we, with we, we have been so promiscuous in giving kids money to, to study things that, that are the, worthless. Right. Thank and you. so that's the way we have to change. That's a good point. It, change the interest rate on the basis of what they're studying. We need nurses, we need science grads, we need sure. math grads, yeah. and we need women in these fields. Yeah. So let's adjust accordingly. Gary, real quick, preview CES for us this year. What are going to what, what are the hottest products that you're going to be talking about at the Consumer Electronics Show? Well, this has become one of the largest, uh, actually the largest auto infrastructure show. Well, not only the car companies there, but everyone that goes to them. Because Well, everything in your car is technology. Absolutely. So we're talking about self-driving cars, we're talking about mobility, we're talking about electric. Obviously, AR and VR is huge and growing every day. The percentages are off that. Smart loudspeakers now, do you know one out of five Thanksgiving purchases are going to be through a smart speaker? So you call your Alexa or, or what, home and, and you just do it that way. And of course we're seeing uh, robotics is growing every year. Uh, startups are pervasive and the big companies are coming to see the startups because that's where a lot of the innovation is. Hmm. We'll have 800 startups there. Sometimes I feel like when these products are so smart, they're stupid, like my TV. I, I, I mean, I don't you ever feel that way? <laughs> No, I have a really intuitive. Too team. smart, <laughs> Gary. Well, thank you. you on it. I think it's really smart. I like that, Gary. Good to see you. Great thank to you see so you. much, Gary Shapiro. There.